Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the EPA diesel tuning and the future of diesel performance. But first, before we get started, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Drop your comments down below. What do you think the future of the diesel performance community will be? Welcome back, guys. We have released a video about, the, about this a little bit before, and I started talking about some of my beliefs on the topic, and we're going to continue that today. As many of you know, the diesel community has kind of come under attack by the EPA more so now than ever. Now, some of that is because of ourselves, and we've been over the top with some of the things, spewing black smoke uh, all over intersections. We do have a part in this, guys. I think all of us have been guilty at one point or another. But regardless, the time is now, it's happening, and we need to adapt. And what's next? We need to start planning for what we're going to do next as a community. Now, one of the big things that's happening is that we were always protected for delete kits under the idea for off-road use only. We've always been protected just like gas vehicles. To everybody that's going to comment on this video that it's always been illegal, no, we've been allowed to, have to convert on-road vehicles to race vehicles just like the gas community. So what's happened is the EPA has a newfound uh, agitation with us as a community coming after us for the fact that, let's be honest guys, a lot of people run delete kits on road vehicles, whether it be DPF or old getting rid of catalytic converters. It's nothing new. It's been happening. That being said, like the catalytic converters, nobody complained about except for you weirdos in California. And by weirdos in California, I really just mean the cardboard. So anyway, fast forward to 08, we end up with our first set of DPF filters. What an awesome time that's been plummeting fuel mileage and sucking all of our performance out. So anyway, what has happened is that we're now fighting back. There's the RPM Act. SEMA and other companies are pushing the RPM Act. I have personally have written out to my congressman and know that, I, that he is supporting the RPM Act, again, for off-road use. I'm not saying that there's a battle for on-road use, guys, and this isn't the current video for that, so we're not really gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about what we can do and what I think the future of diesel performance holds. Now, the RPM Act is to protect our right for off-road racing, basically to convert our on-road vehicle to a race-only use and no longer register it and all that stuff. But uh, that is basically what we're fighting for is to be able to hold on to that, which would make delete kits perfectly legal to have in your possession to every EPA agent out there. And I did have one guy in the last video comment that like, I'm not supporting it enough, or I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys that's pro second amendment, but willing to hand over my magazine for it. No, that's not what I'm saying, guys. I'm trying to say there is a reason for this and I'm not necessarily against cleaner air. And I just want to have my cake and eat it too, though, is I want to make 500 horsepower around the road or 600 horsepower even, and still be compliant with those things. Now, what do I think is next? The R so the RPM Act is hopefully going to pass. I've heard a lot of our elected representatives supporting the RPM Act. That's super good. It means positive things for us in the fact that most likely we will still be able to have our race use diesels and the diesel aftermarket community uh, doesn't have to worry because we'll still have these things that we'll be allowed to do. All that being said, I see things getting worse for the control of on-road diesel use. I'm pretty certain that things will get worse and more scrutinized in the coming years. Sure, there's a lot of states that diesels don't have emissions. I hope it stays that way. Personally, I think emissions is a giant joke anyway on a good year. I think the safety uh, inspection is all that every state should require, but that's just me. And my main reason for that is, truth be told, the people that are doing the crazy stuff with diesels is a relatively small number. Sure, there's tens of thousands of 6 O's running 600 horsepower and 12 valves doing God knows what and 6.6 six Duramaxes. There, there's there are crazy builds out there, don't get me wrong. The bulk of them, that doesn't make up the bulk of the community, therefore I think this attack on us is absurd. I personally believe it's grabbing money from good companies and businesses to line their own pockets and continue to make them relevant in today's standard. Isn't there a water issue somewhere with lead? I don't know. But I'm pretty certain this isn't what the EPA is for. Now all that said guys, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, the, the diesel performance community is dead, it's done. No, it's not. That's ridiculous, and it's that kind of attitude. If everyone had that attitude, yes, it would be. But here's what I think is going to happen, and I'm sure I'm going to get some criticism for this. I do welcome it because we need to talk about it, not just in this platform, but across the board. People need to start talking about it. If you look back to 03, or late 03, I believe, when 
some of the first emission stuff were coming out. Vehicles needed to still compete with one another in the performance department, towing more, towing it better, towing, towing the, with uh, less damage to the vehicle as far as keeping temps down, all these different things. Uh, competing the big three primarily, Toyota, Nissan, sorry. But the big three in the diesel market, yet yeah, they are going after each other competing. So what happened? We have the design of VGT turbochargers. Common rail injection for diesel pickups is now becoming more common. Now forward, a little late to that party, still running the Huey injection system, but still being competitive. Uh, again, so we're seeing, at this time, we're seeing these changes. Guys, those changes were all a direct relation of people pushing the envelope partially because of emissions. If you think for a second that we haven't seen progress in the diesel world in performance, based on stricter emissions, you're wrong. We have more efficient diesels now more than ever, partially because of that. I'm not saying it's the only reason, but people had to think outside the box, become creative and find new innovative ways to make things happen. And they did. And I think we'll continue to see that. Now, I think we're going to see that on two different scales. I think one, we're going to see it from the manufacturers themselves. Nobody wants to release a vehicle that gets eight miles per gallon on the highway. And uh, thankfully, most of the new vehicles do not do that bad. And if you don't hit a regen, you probably can be 16 to 19, which is right in the ballpark of what most people are getting with pre-delete or pre-emissions vehicles anyway. That being said, obviously guys that are deleted will attest you can get much better fuel economy. So I think what's going to happen is as Ford, Dodge and Chevy or Ford, Cummins and Chevy continue to push the envelope and improve their technologies, I think we're going to see the need to delete become less and less. I think there's always going to be a reason to delete these vehicles, but I do think we're going to see it become less and less and really be for those extreme builds where there's a ton of heat and that no performance DPF filter is going to be able to keep up where you just need a straight tube, period, or a hood stack, whatever people are running. So if you caught that, I kind of led into my next point is I think the future of diesel performance is going, I think this just opened up a new market. Look at bulletproof diesel. Uh, we had 40 GR coolers that were failing left and right, contributing to head gasket fail failure. Not saying the only reason, calm down, peanut gallery about the six liters. I know a lot of people talk on, talk bad about them. So you have an EGR cooler that's failing. Well, I don't know who Bulletproof Diesel is and how they figured it out, but I kind of get the picture of a couple of guys hanging out going, I can make that. So what they do? They made it. They made it better. They improved the design. Now Bulletproof Diesel sells EGR coolers along with a whole host of other products that are better than the OEM. The aftermarket's been fixing the shortcomings of the OEM forever. It's going to continue to happen. We're gonna to continue to see that. And I think we're gonna see performance DPF filters come at some point. I think we're gonna see that these restrictions that are giving us issues, I think that we're gonna see the aftermarket eventually go, how many exhaust companies are there out there? Someone's going to eventually make this. It's gonna be expensive. Do not get me wrong. Is it going to be expensive? Holy crap, it's gonna be bad. But we're going to be able to remain emissions compliant, keep the EPA off our backs. For those people that need to re need to maintain compliance for their for their rigs, whatever that reason may be, but for those people that need to, they're going to have an answer at some point. There is a demand for this stuff, guys. Now, I don't know when it'll happen, and it really just depends. If the EPA backs off now, you know, they have their big stint, if they kind of go back and maybe care about the actual environment and not diesel trucks, Maybe we'll, we won't see this, but if they continue to spearhead ahead as hard as they have, I mean, they hit a lot of places super, super hard. If they continue that kind of attack, then yeah, we're going to see these products come out. It's all about demand. If the demand's not there, it won't happen. If the demand's there, it's going to happen. Me personally, I don't want to see this left to the manufacturers to figure out completely. I want to see the aftermarket get involved and truly make some killer products that push our regen cycles back further. So we're doing it less, that make everything more efficient. Maybe not only can they make regen cycles less, maybe they can make them shorter so that the time we have to put up with them attacking our fuel economy becomes less. Maybe, and as far as horsepower goes, limiting how much horsepower we're restricted. Guys, all the new trucks, you delete a new truck, put a hot race tune on it, you're talking high 500 horsepowers. That's crazy. You're talking high 500 to 600 horsepower with essentially a, a factory truck. That's insane, that's out of this world. But you need to delete it to do that. Imagine if instead of saying 580 we could get, imagine if we could still hit like 565, 570. 
would you miss that 15 unless you're racing I, i'm telling you right now you wouldn't so i do think there is a huge area here that we're not thinking of that i think is going to be the future of the aftermarket i'm not saying deletes are going anywhere i don't think they will because there's always going to be people that want to delete it i want to hear that sound i miss hearing a whistle from my darn turbo it's driving me nuts i drove a six liter with a 10 blade turbo for how long and now i have this quiet thing i'm enjoying the quiet i could use a little turbo noise anyway guys that is what i think the future of diesel performance is going to be again that is provided the epa continues to attack the community the way they have. If they completely back off or go back to how they were a year ago or two years ago, I don't think we're gonna see an issue. I don't think we'll see that demand for those products, but if they continue what they've been doing, if mandatory emissions testing across the board happens, then I do think there'll be a demand for these products. I think they'll happen. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this upload. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a big thumbs up. I'm sure some of you are gonna give it a thumbs down. Drop your comments down below, guys. What do you think about the RPM Act and the future of diesel performance and tuning? And I'll see you in the next upload.